Welcome back to episode 75, season 7 of the Geometric View. In this episode, we get deep into the actual shape of the fundamental shape of what all creatures and organisms look like, the archetypal idea, the prebiotic, the abiogenesis. So the 2022 Electromagnetic Universe World Expo was amazing. We'll be releasing the episodes weekly on the this channel. The link is in the show notes Let's below. The Let's get into the circuit. View. We greatly appreciate your support. The best way to donate to us is on PayPal. Just send money directly to goldenscaling at gmail.com. Thank you very much. All right, so I'd like to share with everybody this, uh, this image that I drew quite a long time ago. But then I, well, and I knew a lot of extreme importance of this image um, while I was drawing it and after and intuitively you know <laughs> uh, extremely <laughs> extremely. Ex extremely intuitively and mechan mechanically mechanistically uh gyroscopically um anyway right right uh this this image uh i i, I played around with it a little bit so here let me share the image here with everybody uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay, go into the group. I'm going to share the image, then I'm going to share my screen. Oh, why is it doing that? Okay. Oh, good. I did get some pictures last night. Last night was a good night. All right. This is the image that I want to share with everyone. Mm. Done. Okay, so what I believe that I figured out is the fundamental shape of of all creatures and all living bodies. The ethereal uh, shape that manifests in the heavens and then becomes a living being through umbilical cords, through silver cords, or through, um, obviously, the fractal geometry that we see of all living creatures. As far as I'm concerned, it's just repeating patterns. What does fractals, what do fractals do best? They replicate, they multiply, um, and living creatures do the same thing. So there's higher orders of information that, or even lower orders of information on the, on, on the scaffolding that build all living creatures into the organisms and, and or the frequency of each individual um, creature. We already know that every creature has its own frequency. Um, and I believe that the frequency is tied directly to this geometry that is in the heavens and is a repeating, uh, uh, it recurs. It's a recursive geometry that builds up a body in the heavens through plasma tubes. And that are connected directly to lightning, directly to the global electric circuit, and directly to the solar electric circuit. This, 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 hey, geometry, this geometry goes through loops and loops and loops and recurs and bounces off of the North Pole and the South Pole, and it builds up animate geometry, living information. Living information. So the waters of living the uh, information, the, the the flowing river of life uh, is this geometry. So here, let me share my screen, please. I thought I heard a question. Oh, I was, uh, hey, buddy, what's up, man? Um, I was just going to confirm this, you know, like uh, with my, I don't know if you've seen my conception of bodies video, but it's it's based off the idea that the, the crater's on the main part of the moon shaped in the vortex pattern of like what you're uh, illustrating here. And what I did was I inverted the image and then overlaid them. And I found that if I, um, if I aligned the nodal points, which were the craters of the vortex, I could create faces that look like chickens. I could create fish. I could create Buddha. I could create all these different um, archetypal images. 
And so it's, um, it's almost like two waves coming together from your mother and your father and like the, the right down the center of you, those two fields like merge and create you. Yeah, 23 and 23, 46 chromosomes. There you go. Um, it's all helical, yes. And it's all helical because it is uh, toroidal. Yeah. And, relic, so. and poloidal, poloidal with a direction along the toroid. So yep. uh, like a vector or um, moving in space, like a scalar vector. Um, yep. Now, this simple image here describes the DNA of each individual living creature. But I have to, I have to say that, um, let's see, six must have been three, let's see, it's nested. Okay, so what's going on here is that through resonance and recursion, there's a there's a fractal uh, uh, embedded layers within layers within layers. Now on the screen, what we're looking at here is just the number six. This is the sixth gate or the sixth filament uh, in the Doherty set. Every single one of those things that you're looking at are identical. There is there is a um, azomuthal uh, filament that is moving around. That is the spiral one moving towards the center, the source, and the Christic spiral. Um, you see that one coming out from the bottom left-hand corner going towards source. Then you see a linear progression or poloidal helical uh, filament that is going directly into source coming from the bottom left, the straight one, right? Then you also see the ring of fire. The ring of fire is, uh, is the ring current of, of the, the same number six, the sixth gate. And then at 12 o'clock, you see the, the individual toruses that make up uh, that would be like where where two bones come together uh, the knuckles the nodes I'm showing us in this image here how the nodes and the filaments connect and and they're all actually describing the same creature so when we when we look at matter and we look at um, whether it's a wave or a particle and wave particle duality you can clearly see that it's plasma morphology that's happening here and whether there's an observer or not that plasma morphs and plasma morphology happens um, that's why it can be a wave that's why matter can be a wave or particle or a particle because it can be the filament or the nodal structure the nodal structure each one of them is identical coming from the 12 o'clock noon here that toroid is the sixth one off from the center the next one is the sixth one off from the center the next one is the sixth one off from the center and so is every other node that's ha that's uh, interconnected um, this would be like entanglement but not only would it be entanglement this they're all uh, all the motions moving outward or inward um, are phase conjugate. So they're multiples of gold mean out of this, this uh, image. Now, you can see it's a burning ring of fire. Now, this goes directly with my vision that I had of building a machine that can worship God greater than we can. I probably shouldn't be divulging this much information, um, and I'm writing a book directly about this, but every single number and every single, 
every single number coming off the Doherty set has its own pitch, its own spiral, its own um, pressure, its, its very own uniqueness. So it mimics nature in that there is atomic uniqueness and uniqueness on all scales for everybody and everything. Um, yeah, I was actually writing about this freaking thing today, man. It's crazy. Yeah, this is what but it's in about. The sense of, but in the sense of just, I was writing about a hair, you know, hair growth and follicle. So like a hair follicle being one of these particular, like a, a macro of a micro of what you've demonstrated here. And then having below that, uh, you know, fibromectin and uh, collagen joining to equal ECM being another micro but all of it having you know forces acting upon it based upon the medium with which it's existing yes and uh what's th this is scale symmetric it's not supersymmetry it's not exhibit exhibiting supersymmetry although it might um but we haven't right. measured that in the lab but what we have measured is that there is scale symmetry um to, in the cosmos so the, static, uh, I, the staticness of it that's a question that i've got so what, what we're looking at here is a is that based upon an individual's let's say life path through life or is this a static function specific for each person is it the observer or is it the observed you know what are we talking about here in terms of let's say that you have the all of the nodes and you have the paths and you have the, the spiral and the chirality there taking place. You got the Ouroboros with the snake swallowing its tail in the center, you know, all of these aspects of this picture is the fire. See what determines that path is, I think the question that I've got. Well, and I know it's not just one why, thing. That's why there's life. This is, this is a DNA. This is space DNA. This is what, actually start the propagation of the idea of the morphogenetic field. This is what morphogenetic morphogenesis is. This is my I'm telling you I'm writing the function for this, man. This is crazy. I said yeah. this like literally this thing. That's what we talked about the other day. Dang. Yeah. It's crazy. Well well this is just it's just this is how it has to happen. Whether I'm writing it, you're writing it, Ramon's writing it, I'm saying it out loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to no, at all. Yeah, I'm trying to say it's crazy how much everything's just relating to one another. It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's titillating. It'll make your hair stand up on end. <laughs> Pun intended. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely feel like this. Um... Like uh, what I'm doing with the the natural logarithm and, and farther digits down, like what I'm seeing is that there's the like each double number is like a pair and they're like a set of like a rhythm and yeah uh, right right and that's how those those all all those things interlace and there's a what I keep trying to like articulate in my in my thing is is the dimensionality aspect of like each pair. And how all these layers are are part of the same process, and they they stack on top of each other. But you can also like slice them out, like you've done with the Doherty set, and get clarity that way. Yeah. So Euler, Euler, I think is the one that did that. He was the one that was saying, not did that, but it was saying, hey, you know, gosh, let me find it here. So Everything we do is 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 dependent on Euler, basic Euler. Yeah. yeah the, the evenness of it all. You have to have that. Uh, uh, Euler's number. Right. You have to go through things in an even way in order to have a, a set kind of, uh, I guess, outcome, so to speak. So Yeah, you have to keep iterating. So if I could go off of what Jay was just saying, these are what Walter Russell referred to as sexed mates. Sexed mates or pairs. Yep. Right? Um, when you look at the vertebrate kingdom, taking it back to a naturalist approach, which all the greatest thinkers talk about uh, looking at nature and biomimicry, uh, creating nature, designs based off of nature. When you look into nature, um, uh, now I forget what I was gonna say. 
because it's all pairs. Pairs. It's all it's all oh, parody sex mating in the vertebrate kingdom. Uh, we see there society is trying to destroy our concept of uh, of reality by breaking down the barriers of uh, of sex duality and sex opposites. Yeah. Um, but it's clear that anything you look at in nature, you pick it up and you look at the belly, you turn it over and you rub it to the belly, and you're like, you're like, oh, that's a boy or a girl every time. Yeah. That's yeah. how you find it out. That's how you find out the sex of it. That's how you find out the sex of plants. Yeah. Plants are doing this. Everything yeah. is doing this. Um, sure, there's bacteria that's um, asexual and all sorts of different things that are asexual. But that's a more of a rare, not necessarily a rarity, because bacteria makes up a big part of the phylum and a lot of other things. But when you They're get into, simpler. yeah, when There's you get into uh, the vertebrates, there is something that is called the male or female. That yeah. is because they're both part of one donut. Let's say you take the 168th donut off the Doherty set. And you and you do uh, the data analysis of it, and you break it down, and you realize it's nested inside of another pair that's nested inside of another pair that's nested inside of another pair. Yeah. And that's actually how you get the elephant. That's because you can't get the elephant without yep. the other two nested parodies of the other two creatures that are above and below it on the phylum. Yep. So this is what I'm describing here with the Doherty set is uh, is the food cycle, the solar cycle. It's it's how animals eat animals. It's Ouroboros. It's so the whole donut concept itself in the Ouroboros is actually broken down into individual filaments, and every single animal has its own frequency, and that is mappable in the Doherty set. And that is what I'm showing us in this image. It's number six. So um, this number six, uh, the sixth gate. Uh, would be um, inside of the wait, let me see here. every every odd number is the beginning of of the filament. It's the outside ovium. It's the outside layer, the, mm. the first double layer that builds the ability for other layers to subsequently nest within it, and all of the nested creatures inside of that are all even numbers every yeah. single creature nested inside of it is even numbers all the odd numbers are the outermost layers that hold and and incubate uh the the beings of all of the other inside enfolded quaternion sedonian information that are the creatures yeah. So this is this is totally what I'm finding with the um with with my model and the recursions of when things happen and when things break off is that it's the odd numbers when things uh expand and divide. Um and those, and, and what yeah. and what are those odd numbers? Those odd numbers are also the primary or the prime numbers. Ah, uh, yeah, I was about yeah. to say I was thinking that in the next term. Yeah. Well, you know, if we look at it from a societal point of view, you know. Carl Jung called it uh, outliers in society. Um, in this thing that I'm writing now, I utilized a lady and her thing talking about uh, her. She had created an algorithm for genome uh, genome assembly, but they were finding that every time they got uh, utilizing De Bruijn graphing, they were finding that every time they got into a even number, everything was fine. It was okay, but then you know because of Euler's theorem, but that every time they got something. It resulted in an odd um, result, it would cause some problems because they would have constant results. You know, they would just end up with piles of results that would provide these odd result, uh, odd uh, uh, solutions, sorry. They would have odd solutions come about, but then there would be so many of the odd solutions that there was getting, the information was getting convoluted and they weren't able to come up with a good uh, overarching you know, outcome or solution or, you know, overarching uh, hypothesis based on what they were seeing in the data sets because of the convolution of the, all of the odd numbered information coming out. So, yeah. 
Jay, Jay, you're saying that you know you're finding most things activate or most things happen during the odd cycles or during the odd times. I agree, or I don't know if I agree or disagree. I'm just saying that potentially, you know, there can't be light without dark. There can't be you know odd without even. But uh, I think it's more the way that I'm describing it is that it's the static nature of the Doherty set uh, kind of network itself, the static nature of it's there and it's present. Then you have a solemnization that comes in with frequency. You have that effect that comes in. Now, whatever it's one small piece of a frequency or multiple pieces of a frequency, just like to the human ear, we've semantically yep. labeled notes inside of uh, the, I don't know, what's that scale? The scale, the... Oh, yeah, right. So you have that scale and we've labeled those semantically because they're more appealing to the human ear in terms of harmonious. But if it's out of harmony, that doesn't mean we can't hear it anymore. You know what I mean? It's like we still hear it. It's just out of it's not har as harmonious as an A note or a C note or whatever. So but in between those notes, there's, you know, still music being played. It's just not harmonious. Is that am I following you guys following me there? Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah, but you have to have those disharmonious sections in order to achieve the next level of harmonious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they're there. So I think it's like it's, it's all, the mortar. Yeah. It's the mortar for the bricks with which life is built. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I think if everything is completely harmonious, it stops growing, it stops functioning. That's kind of what I was saying about like the the heaven realms being considered a place where like enlightenment can't be achieved uh, in the Tibetan six realms model. Um, I'd rather be someplace where there's a little bit of angst and suffering that gives me something to evolve with and uh, challenges me. I don't think it has to be this much as what we've placed into the world today. That's my No, no. Um... <laughs> but it does, I agree with you. I just don't think it has to be as much as we've placed upon ourselves today in today's world. Yeah, there's a lot going on right now. So, Hard to harmonize. So what we're looking at here is is all is is the first iteration inside of the third gate. So there's a there's a there's a I don't know what to call them yet. I swear I saw the name and I was I wrote it down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta track that down in your memory, bud. What is that? Uh, okay, yeah, I got it. Um, but there's these inner and outer layers uh, that work as the the bodies. I guess you could say it's the dermis and epidermis of, uh, or the womb, and the womb and the uh, umbilical cord. Uh, for each one of these uh, nodes, so let's, yeah, for each one of these nodes. So this okay. is the sixth one. This is the sixth one. Where, where, where am I seeing the sixth at there? I mean, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is what from center to top. Is that what I'm looking at for the, at the 12 o'clock path? Is that what I'm seeing there? One, two, three, if, four, five, six, seven. Being if you seven. were to make if you were to make equidistant, e oh, yeah, seven, yes, you're, yeah, because the center is zero. Got so it, got it, got it, got it. See, I want to yeah, make that clarification. Yeah. Good, good, yeah, good. See, okay. Well, that's the most important thing that you have. That took me forever to figure out. Like, well, how do I map this system out? I could start with the center is one, and then every number would be different. Or I could start as the center is zero, and, and, and make it every other number different. Than what the so that different outcomes for uh, for different arrangements. But once you realize that the universe is hollow and it's a hollow universe, it's it's um, holographic. It's hollow. I don't want to uh, bring religion into this, man. But the Bi the Torah goes through very clearly, and the Bible does as well, and utilizes the number seven or factors thereof of seven thirty seven, like you mentioned before, which is three seven seven to the third is forty nine. So it goes through 49, 7, and the combination of 37 and 73 uh, being, uh, uh, it's not reciprocal, but uh, anagrams of one another almost. Or what's that word? They're, you know, look, you know. Uh, Both ways. Anyway, yes. So it's 37, 49, and multiples of 7 all the way through 
the Bible, both from the Old Testament pointing to Leviticus and the New Testament pointing back to Leviticus, both pointing to the center. It's an amazing yeah. thing to see. I can show, I can send the, the video the guy did about it all, but it's amazing Wait. that you're utilizing the actual number seven here for this. Um, well, for that, for that coordinate, you know, connectivity there, the connection there. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that each one of these gates is extremely unique. Uh, it, 100% unique in where it is in the propulsion of of the uh, the cascade outward, and it's always happening. This is always that what we're looking at here is 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 the field uh, uh, that that's coming directly out of every single atom constantly. Uh, that's what we're looking at, but that field it, is emanating out of everything all the time, including the uh, the the Z pinch in the center of our galaxy uh, uh -huh. and the sun. Is, is that zero considered the Z pinch to you? Uh, yes, the zero is the Z pinch and Z pinches can happen. Z pinches can happen all over the fabric. <laughs> yeah. So what we're looking at here is a projection upward, basically of a Z pinch versus looking downward. We would see the uh, exact same thing in reverse. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, you're, See, you, yeah, so. it's a, it's a, um, aerial view of looking down on a Z pin. Right. Right. That's great. Oh. Perfect. I, yep. Got it. Yeah. So we but, would see if we were to travel physically, freeze everything here, right as it is, freeze it and then travel down to that zero point and look, we would see a opposite cone shaped, uh, same thing just in reverse. Correct. Mentally, okay. I'm just, just going to say, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say my hypothesis out loud since I, this is all pretty much a spoiler episode for uh, one of my books. Um, but my hypothesis, let me look in my notes here. Da, da, da. Something about fire rings moving through chimneys or tubes might produce or induce an effect in humans that is possibly greater than worshiping God. Sending out smoke signals like the natives did. Yes. Uh, and... And there's not only smoke signals, but I, I was watching Backyard Scientist, one of the best YouTubers on the planet, um, period, hands down. Nighthawk and Light is good, too, but Backyard Scientist, the nerdiest of nerds. Um, and he created, I've, I've been trying to do research on flaming uh, vortices. Okay, because there's flaming vortices on the on the planets on the gaseous giants that have uh, that have a permanent or at least some sort of a permanent. Um, so they're not uh, they're form constant. They, well, I think in a static form, it's a donut, right? But then in the moment you apply any kind of physical external perturbation or force to it, then you start entering into this, uh, uh, you know, hot vib vibration type shape or whatever, you know, you get into whatever kind of shape, but initially that's static and without any outside influence, whether it be energetically, mimsical, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever inter interference you would have upon a, a donut shaped static torus, then it starts taking shape based upon the environment and the outside stimuli, correct? Well, but the static nature is going to be a that that you keep talking about is is like the pre is like pre existent. Nothing, nothing static. It's all. So I mean, you're talking never, about never poten come into, static never, potential, maybe. Right. Yes. That's. I'm sorry, but yes. So if we were to ever see something in a frozen state of potentiality, visualized, yeah, it would be in a it would be in a donut shape. But the moment uh -huh. you start adding to like what you have here, that's based upon somebody's life path, so to speak, let's say, hypothetically. But, yeah, you know, yeah. somebody's life path in front of you, that's the result of all of these things coming into play. Yeah, and it's also the identical birth of how, um, how creature stacking works. That's a simple way of thinking about it. Creatures stack on creatures. Do we need to make a little kid song about it? how creatures stack on creatures, how we're layers of death built on layers of death, how the soil is death based built on layers of death of death of death of death. Um, and how the, uh, my electro uh, uh, the 
um, hydroelectromycelial network. Uh, it's probably all one and connected for sure and in, into the memory bank. Um, but uh, it's all just death and rotting soil. But what is the uh, what is the end result here? What is the purpose uh, of uh, meliorating body. soil? Yeah, my body. It is. It would then be based on the death, the decomposition, and the rebirth. That's all it is, always, yeah. Uh, life, it, life. It decomposes, and then it's, re, it, it's rebirth. Now, can I ask you a question? Have you um, drawn the eye yet? Have you done a, a drawing on the eye yet? By uh, infinite amount of drawings that I haven't released yet. Not now. Why I ask is, would the eye look a lot different to that one? Uh, there's places in the Doherty set that literally the optics of the lenses and lenses, um, even even the the overlap uh, of how it's yeah. um, a little a little oblong shaped. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is 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 in pieces and parts of of the Doherty set, but I believe that that's because of a direct result of of the different spectrums of light having to move in that pattern through space. That's what builds the okay. eyeball, like the ear, like the ear that we were talking about earlier. Did sound build the mm -hmm. ear? Or did the ear build sound? Look at all the shapes of different ears of all different creatures. So, uh, of course, of course, a lot of these are going to have a lot of similarities as they're based on DNA type biological cell structure um, that comes through in them. And we know that there's very little difference um, that creates something that appears a lot different. Um, so, yeah. And the other thing I'd like to ask, buddy, is so that would still work on the donut system that you were talking about a couple of weeks ago when we were all on one evening? It would yeah. be, you know, yep. Yeah, this is this is the donut. This is, I mean, like, my video for the Thunderbolts was like donut uh, one, donut zero, you know, like, there's a there's just the whole thing can be talked about in uh in in donut uh yeah. and, yeah. and, and it, then you get your pain yeah it, it, you get the parody of creature stacking why is the why is why is there a one flower left in the world that only one bug can pollinate they're nested together on the Berkling current filament of the donut, the torus. Am I still sharing my screen? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, yeah, they're 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 nested not as the same creature, but they're it's the 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 flower is in all of this what I'm talking about is is sonobiology. It's a it's an entirely new electrosonic speciation theory. We're done with Darwin's theory of speciation. This is the theory of speciation of the future. This is what electrosonic uh, uh, speciation theory. Uh, it, boom. This is this is how a diagram of it. Yeah, and a diagram of it. This is how, and I can, sh and this is just a very simple diagram, but I can show you why it's necessary. For the, for the hierarchical, I mean, if you think about apex predators and how biology works, top down and uh, down uh, up, down to top, uh, there is a stacking order. And that stacking order is, is the Ouroboros, and this is what the stacking order is. There's an infinite amount of numbers. Every single number on the Doherty set is associated with, with paired sex duality of the entire creature male and female of humans are one part and parcel part of the torus you can see one spirals around the other mm -hmm. they're mated 
one healing yeah. spirals around the other. They're mated together. They can't unpair. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's what DNA and, is. And buddy, so when DNA you look at the whole DNA. system, and when we look at the whole system, we've got the sun spiraling around our, our galaxy. We spiral around the sun, our planet, and everything does what you're just saying. The logarithmic, yeah. the, the logarithmic yeah. Euler. We just gotta find the beam of the sun. Yes. Oh, yeah, we just got. Oh, sorry, I interrupted. Bow shock. Bow shock. Yeah, this is the bow shock of DNA. Yeah. yeah, this is this is the uh, this is the prebiotic, um, uh, uh, abiogenesis. This is this is abiogenesis. The, the information, is, mm. this, the information leading to, uh, to, to the g- geometry of, of information, of the, inf- the, the pre-information that leads to the structural dynamics that are at play in reality that we see. So it's before yes, animate yeah. objects come into existence. This is the, the, the design and the archetype. It's the, the space static, DNA. The state. The, mind. The, the potentiality static state. So can yeah, I take it well, back a level? I, 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 I well, definitely well, embedded everywhere. Wait one second, one second. I just have to say this one thing. It can be thought of as the cosmic microwave background, CMB, mm-hmm. um, and, and all of the information together. When you said that, Jonathan, it reminded me of that kind of, kind of that, or the Higgs field. The Higgs field, and and all information has its place in every single uh, orientation to every other place. This is the future, baby. Yeah, the Doherty set becomes basically the static background matrix lattic, lattice work structure with which everything then realizes its potential. And this is only one Doherty set. This, uh, this is only one. This is the inverse well, no, square. No, I mean, it's just, oh, we're yeah. just looking at, we're just observing. You see, the observation yeah. of the observer that matters more than almost anything else. It's the observation of the observer. And by through that, like what you were talking, Andy, with the eyes, everything comes down to the observer observing, and then the focus point, or at least the uh, perception and the field of perception with which that observer is capable of absorbing that amount of light or uh, the amount of information, whichever the case may be, in the hierarchical scale, all of these things, the the stacking, everything, all of that's all dependent upon what, what you're saying there. It's the wheels within wheels and why the cherubim uh, uh, that are the, the, the four creatures that are at the center of the throne. It's the reason why their wings fold when, when they move from place to place. They don't move because it's all interconnected uh, 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 scale invariant uh, cosmology. Uh, logarithmic scale and variant cosmology angels with their wings up and their wings down uh w- moving to and from as a messenger of god mercury i mean this is this is hitherto the way to and fro this is it baby this is this is the ring like the yeah, reason why the ring is so important uh, every gate important. dude you have no idea i'm telling you dude once you start understanding the information of every single gate, when you circle one circle in the Doherty set and you study all of the parameters and how it's interlinked to all of the other parameters, it, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a very dynamic and refined and gorgeous system. Now, once we understand how it all connects and how, uh, uh, like, like doing the, I guess, uh, the, the the human genome project where we tried to map DNA. We need to do that with the Doherty set. We need to do the universal uh, genome project. And that's everybody or whoever. And that's what the Doherty set book is going to be about that's coming out next year. It's a can game. I send you? Can I send you where I'm at right now with what I've got? And let you just, if you don't, I know you've got a lot of things going on and plenty of things to taking up your time. But if you read through this, man, I think it just goes through what we're talking about. It plugs into read DNA, it. you know. Dude, I want to talk about it. Read some of it. Highlight it. 
Oh, you, it's it gets yeah, complicated, but I mean, it's basically trying to produce a function, a reduced function, to elaborate further upon what you know the the the, the nature of this whole entire thing. You know, it's it's. So you start with a Doherty set scaffolding. It'll provide the baseline with which to visually interpret the static morphogenetic field, right? Then I quoted you saying a, a quick description of that. The supergeometry simplex of the Doherty network exhibits progression of systems and networks on a Planck scale, a sub-Planck scale, and a cosmological scale. The Doherty network describes the geometry of a force-free field-aligned current called a Birkeland current. All of the intricate details within a Birkeland current act as a shape power, given rise to the causat causative formation of information inherent within the communicative structure. It is the geometric structure of the projective dynamic scale symmetry within filaments and nodes. So then I take it to the next step and I utilize the Frank Condon principle, which basically topologically describes the occurrence in real time of overlapping self aligning double layers of energetic fields within a closed system. Right, which is that Doherty set set line matrix, uh, the back backdrop or backfield, but that is in direct correlation to direction of nodes within that Doherty set network. So the direction of those nodes matter. To not to use a pun there, but it does. Yeah. And for the for the reference and further correlation, the known completed studies done on ligand banding, which is metal to ligand charge transfer or ligand to metal charge transfer is what I'm using to proceed as the representative of functional numeric values and preliminary example of linear time within a closed system and of propagating within a specific medium. Okay, so then expressing again the action or direction of nodes within the Doherty set network. Yeah. Then going number four, utilizing the known modal scales of suffragio frequencies a, as a baseline input for numerical representation of vibrational frequencies of energetic fields, or a better description is to provide baseline values for the scalar function produced. So basically you have this matrix sets there, but we all know that as you have this Doherty set as the baseline, you still have stuff that is coming in that's gonna affect that before even matters introduced. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I just and walked I'm out. Saying, I just walked outside, I have to say this real quick, and saw my dog literally just watching a squirrel in my in my front yard, just hanging out in the sun. <laughs> like good stuff, totally right? totally could chase the squirrel. No, decides to watch it. All right. <laughs> He's <laughs> He's like, yeah, by that's some that's some that's some hierarchy stacking there. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, nice. So, sorry, but uh, to continue on with this, yeah, the uh, closed system and potentially energetic influence the network. So basically, the, to provide a baseline values for the scalar function produced as energetic fields are enacted upon by one another within the closed system and potentially to energetically influence the entire network absent of any material or observational interference. So that's a mimsical kind of concept there, where you have the sulfurgio frequencies is what we utilize as the baseline to represent the energetic fields that we are interrupting with here on this realm from the heavenly bodies, from the known ether, from the MIMS type approach to that. Then you apply the natural rate of decay as the baseline for natural reduction of the applied frequencies of the energetic fields, so, or solemnization, or the basically the entropy released naturally from that observed morphogenetic field. So basically the antithesis of this drawing, the opposite side of it, what we're not seeing here, but the other end of it. Then you utilize the combination of Max Dirac's equation as proposed by this guy here, Nayamboyo, which Jay, you introduced him to me. His connection between Maxwell's equations and the Dirac equation for the sake of completion of node identification for that algorithmic use, and then to minimize the difficulty faced when injecting SI and Gaussian units. So that's something else totally different, an issue we've faced there with SI and Gaussian, um, and resulting in not direct unit conversions. Uh, and then the establishment of a fourth component to utilize within the Maxwell Dirac reduced function is then provided within the Lawrence gauge condition. So a lot of this we've been talking about is really just a Lawrence gauge condition as well. But it's observed set of one and zero and zero one to be associated with the electrostatic charge potential and utilized within the generated function. Uh, the Lord's gauge, Lawrence gauge condition is then functionalized to properly identify the time dependent observation of the electromagnetic morphogenetic fields through the utilization of these resulting retarded potentials described in the preceding steps, but not to be confused with the Lawrence invariant, which both, I haven't finished that, but both are very much blah, blah, blah. I haven't finished that section. And then you come in with uh, 
the next step, and it's apply E8 group theory to the observed position within the Doherty set and the Solomonized medium, recognition of the whale group, which is the Lie algebra, in conjunction with findings expressed by this paper that I referenced, this Rita Kunda, uh, utilizing the genome mapping in a linear way to describe uh, genome mapping by time through that genome mapping and the debrusion graphing to properly express and then determinately calculate the metal to ligand or ligand to metal associated reference pathway for each node, as well as the provided solemnization factors of the medium to predetermine the initial lattice group operation and or the initiation of the energetic timeline direction of each node. It is in this instance, the outcome of the function is inverse derivative of the retarded potentials for the morphogenetic field as established by the Lorentz gauge condition, and a coaxter diagram diagram can be expressively utilized to kind of demonstrate the completed reductions. But that's kind of like where we're at with this. Finally, you apply the decay rate again to the entire observed and final resolution of the potentialities. So it's basically utilizing the Doherty set as the preliminary algebraic expression, no, sorry, as the background structure yep, right. to right to produce a functional algebraic expression of exactly what you're seeing there, but being able to apply almost any kind of uh, unknown uh, variable or potentiality or retarded potential. So a potential that's being like through a magnetic field being forced into a different shape or different pathway based upon the energetic fields, that, or, you know, fields that are coming from what we can't see, what we can't feel, what we don't know, but it's happening. You know, it just is. You have this, the galactic forces uh, resonating upon each one of these nodes. So to have, you cannot have a static, just much as you can't have a, a smoke going through a chimney or fire going through a flume. Chimney, you can't have it in a perfect donut shape because you automatically, through its just existence, or creation into this realm, you automatically have forces that are at will against it, so to speak. Right, right. Ooh. And Backyard Scientist uh, does a good job at, at actually showing us how you can make uh, fire, toroidal fire donuts underwater. Ah, um, the medium changes. Ah, yeah. that's good. That's a yeah. good one. Bro. Yeah. I like that. The medium determines these things completely. Uh, and there's there's this they had to figure out dude it's great great episode um, backyard scientist uh, fire donut uh, water fire donut um, so that's the closest thing that I could find towards us being able to make these uh, these fire ring vortexes I know that there's there's fire blowers out there that can blow fire vortexes I'm sure fire rings there's got to be. Um, you know, if you can blow smoke right. rings. You yeah, know, yeah. Think One of the first things fire. I learned to do as a child, you know, not a child, good gracious, but, you know, 13, 14, ah. <laughs> to, to blow smoke rings, you know, sitting there, I was bored and just pick right. up my father's pipe and learn how to blow smoke rings. But none of them, though they were in donut shape and they were rings, they still were not completely, fully, 100%, um, you know, symmetric in all aspects. They were they were enacted upon upon forces all around them immediately upon uh, entering the the ether or the world, the realm with which we exist. So any molecule down to the mac micro scale coming into existence through whatever means, whether it's transmutation, whether it's you know uh, alternative energies changing from one form of energy to the other, no matter what, the moment it comes into existence, it may you know, may come into existence based upon this structured lattice work here through the Doherty set. That's the, that's the condition that has to be met prior to being able to be brought into existence, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, and then it starts changing instantaneously, instantaneously. dramatically. Instantaneously. Yes. Yeah, because of all the dynamics of everything else that's born. Right, and, and that's what we haven't been able to do is functionally express that, I don't think, properly in a functional way, whether it's ge geometrically or algebraically. Have you, yeah. um, Jonathan, have you looked at my, my paper on infinite relativity yet? 
Uh, I've seen two of them. I'm not sure. I didn't catch the title, man. I'm sorry. My new, the my first, newest paper that I just dropped. I read, yeah, yeah, I read, yeah the, the 69 being the one of the major numbers in there. No, that was the logarithmic timeline. That was my <laughs> okay, first that was one, the yeah. The new one is a better iteration of it because it, it talks about infinite sets and how every unit, every whole unit is actually an infinite set. It, it, when you start realizing that nothing is, is solid and whole and that like whole numbers as are, are like a figment of our imagination, like a point or a line or a circle. It's These a are all just labeling. the regular yeah. regularizations, you know, a metric, a metric expression of that would be uh, from the function one to two. There's an infinite amount of variables. Exactly. And on, on all scales, it's like that. And that's well, so exactly just what like it is. The so Sofegio frequencies, you know, we find that certain aspects of music are more resonation, more resonating or more harmonious than others. That doesn't necessarily mean that those other, you know, frequencies don't exist. <laughs> you know, they do exist very much so. It's just that when they come into harmoniz harmonization, and I'm not sure which, maybe it's coming into harmonization with this right here with the Doherty set lattice structured uh, universe. And through that harmonization, that's what becomes appealing to the human, becomes appealing to whatever, but at the same time, allows also for matter to exist. It allows for you know, transmutation of elements. It allows for activity, burning of energy, creation of energy, everything. It allows for everything based upon the frequency being provided and then the reaction therein. Yeah, like there's all kinds of planetary and, and harmonics that if they weren't here, we wouldn't be here. We're nestled. We're like Buddy says, we're nestled, a, a nestled set in, in much bigger circles yeah. and bubbles. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, and, and this is the what you explained and expressed, um, and what I'm showing off here. Let me throw down another prediction. This, uh, what we're gonna get. When, when we start sampling light core samples uh, through different spectroscopies uh, technologies, uh, and, we, and we take the light and we extract it, we're going to get identical uh, patterns to the, the nesting behaviors of the creatures, because oh, we're gonna see creature yeah, stacking yeah. We're going to see creature stacking and the hierarchy of how all animals and how all creatures um, are 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 nested inside of each other, literally consuming each other, eating and digesting each other, and that's what the cycle is. Um, well, see, that's what the Frank Condon principles kind of go into. They they state that any electronic transition, a change from one vibrational energy level to another, will be more likely to happen if the two vibrational wave functions overlap more significantly. Yeah. That's the baseline of what it's trying to specificate there. That's not, not a, I don't think specificate's a word. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> so that sounds it's, like... That's what, it's, that's what it's being. It's, it's saying, hey, look, things are going to just be like more harmonious when you have two of them yeah. running together with each other. You're going to have that occur in spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. Yep. Spectroscopy. And again, this is why I keep coming back to planet planetary birth formation as like a, as a family where there's two parents interacting, creating a new body, and uh, it comes out so, between so them. Think, what about the power of nine, guys? I mean, I, I hear this a lot. I see this a lot. The the nine being a big, uh, you know, three six nine, but nine being a very powerful force in itself, and we, you know, nine planets, et cetera. So what, yeah. what's, nine, what's nine got to do with all this? <laughs> Nine's the tenth number. Yeah, yeah. Nine, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, nine is one of the most crucial. Uh, let me uh, let me take a look and make sure this is this is nine and not eleven because sometimes I get them mixed up because they both operate on the same pillar. They both operate on the uh, I forget what Ramon called it, but um, things that are so close that they uh, hold each other tight and repel each other. They're the opening gate. Um, so let me look this at be this just here. In a, in a hypothetical sense, you know, we've talked about time speeding up and things like, you know, but 
just in a vortex type shape, as we get down closer to the center, of course, things are going to speed up. So as we move through a cycle of time, whatever that cycle is, you know, we get down to a center point. It's just going to get faster. If we're way further away, time's moving slower thing, everything, the whole planet alignments taking place as they do the retrogrades, whatever takes place in the galactic scale is taking place at a slower pace. But as we move okay. further and further closer down towards the center point, could not nine and 11 be that center point? Um, there's, yeah, there's an opening and a closing. Um, uh, and, uh, there's an opening and closing that allows all all information to either uh, <coughs> centripetally centripetally go towards source. So there's an open gate for uh, uh, the gravitative or life bearing force, right. or chi, or orgone, or uh, uh, not necessarily God. That's a totally different thing. God, that's a way totally different thing than just the opening gate of right. uh, energy right. moving forward towards implosion. So the implosive gate uh, is is actually so the birthing gate, the birthing gate, the opening gate that allows things towards uh, coming towards the source is eleven, mm -hmm. um, and that's a specifically gorgeous gate because it holds open the four one of two of the four directions of uh, the winds coming from the heavens on every scale every wave lit every single wave lit has yep. these this nine and eleven that opens it and uh, and allows the access towards either in or out mm -hmm. and the eleventh gate is that gate um it's the information the nine, nine being just the previous uh, step to that. No, is that, is that what we're looking at or not? Is no, it just the antithesis? no, nine is the antithesis. So okay. the ninth gate is the is the death, the gates to the death vortex, which would be the radiative, um, uh, destructive death vortex uh, that that is is uh, again. Let me double check here and look at this. Before I, somebody needs to let the the, the Bahi know because they're they're really passionate about that number nine. Um, the Bahi faith. Bahai. Yeah, the Bahai. Yeah, so they're, they're really adamant about that number nine. Well, it's not a bad thing, just because it's it's the gates to uh, the the outer or the outer gate, yeah. outer gates away from source, just because it's that. Doesn't mean it's bad, but it is associated with a lot of death cults. Yeah, it's the completion number. So, um, there's there's that holds open the other two uh, gates of the winds from the heavens, and this is in almost all ancient cultures of the the winds from the heavens, um, and yeah. and and it is it's it exists on all scales. You have to have these place these parameters set up um, right but the, i just happen to um optically be able to see it because they sit and they hold these vortexes open um and right. and it's really really interesting um it, it's and, almost like pluto dude going out into beyond the uh and through the orc cloud and stuff and like bringing right. stuff in that's a mess you know right. yeah the orc cloud is gorgeous. I'm going to do a whole presentation on that. Um, I think I think what I found is that like eight is the most stable for a, a system, um, and then that ninth thing starts basically splitting off, and that's the process that we're seeing with Pluto slowly, albeit. But uh, no, I can see NASA's in, you know enjoyment to messing with Pluto. Then. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a planet. It's, in nature, just like 9 yeah. and everything else they do. You're not a planet anymore. Yeah. The ritual's going. <laughs> we can't let the public be aware of the number nine and the ninth planet. It's no longer a planet anymore. Yeah, okay, fine. It's a planet. It's but, like, planet. One, of, one of my ideas is that, like, you know, when Uranus and Pluto 
cross paths right at the or on the elliptical right at the Oort cloud, it probably pulls some stuff in that and comes towards Earth, and that could be part of the the Pluto cycle. But pulling um, it in from where? What do you mean? Pulling from the Oort cloud. cloud, it could so. send some some asteroids towards us. You know. Right. Right. That's just a a thought. I, I mean, I have no proof, yeah. but. But th that's like, but he said, like opening up the gate to the heavens. It's opening up the the that hole in our in our shell of our solar system. Or the this, might have you know the gut, the or the bacteria in our gut. You know, something as simple as that. The energetic fields that are created through the crossing over of these different elliptical patterns, or the, the, the heavenly bodies going, you know, the galactic paths that they take change within each human being just as much as a solar flare does have these planetary alignments that uh, adjust the material of the human body itself mm. moving it up or down unlocking junk dna etc all these different things we've talked about on several occasions but i think there's a there's a there's a lot to be said for the energies that come from the planets to the earth i think in my mind it just is and there's a yeah, for sure. Relation in relationship to the exact, you know, the overarching for this realm being, you know, let's say in a static nature for a second, just for a millisecond, the static nature is being established through the structure here. As I've already said, that structure being as it is, the moment you hit play and unpause things, you're going to have energies from the galactic bodies affecting that structure. So that when you bring matter into the, this realm but, based upon that structure and the influence of the heavenly bodies, you immediately have the, the shape of be a timeline, so to speak. Uh, but there, but there's a form constant, and that's why systems gradually move towards this um, this asymmetric, this seeming asymmetrical array of planetary spacing and um, this. It's a dimensionality aspect. Like each planet is a right. node, and like this is what I'm saying. Like it's infinite. It's also like its own dimension. It has its own time frame. It has its own uh, uh, lifespan, yeah, and those are all interacting and overlapping. In a dimensional yeah. type way, or at least in a projective from 3D to 4D to 5D. Yeah. Kind of way. Yeah. I got You're, you. I got this, you. This okay. So let me get a little more personal with this image. If I'm still sharing my screen. Yeah, sorry, uh, my face on it. I don't know why. Yeah, it's still here. Uh, I, I pulled up uh, a bigger one for myself, but you're still sharing. Um, now, according to the Bible, uh, and maybe other scriptures, not sure, we're the number six, right? So yeah. this is the sixth. Carbon. This is the sixth number off of uh, the the set. Uh, uh, so as far as so, humans, as far as stacking animalistically is concerned in the hierarchy, the carbon-based life form that we are, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, six, 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 being this particular foundation. Yeah, that's why I don't know why, like I could, I could have started on any number introducing the, the, uh, the tubes and any creature, right? But for some reason, this is the one that I had that was just That's sitting around. Uh, this was the one that I had sitting around. Um, I've sketched it many times uh, in many gates. But if this is the sixth gate here, I'm going to I'm going to do another one. And actually, I'm going to use the same drawing, but I'm going to sketch over it. And I'm going to show you the third gate and how the third gate nests with all of this and show that we're we're if, if we are the sixth gate. We are that close to source in or in order of creature stacking, right? And that's why they there there was I, maybe why there's them in the scriptures talking about how there's an ox on one face, there's a lion on the other face, there's um, uh, four different creatures, an eagle and uh, and a human, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, now this is. Are getting our minds used to the type of creature with many heads, right? So maybe there's an order of stacking of creatures that are that, and we're in this order, sort of like Christ is in the order of Melchizedek. 
there's orders here that are being shown and these are hierarchical and lowerarchical orders clearly yeah i that's funny because I, I i think i created almost every one of those animals faces out of the moon uh overlays that i did like there's an owl there's a like i said a fish there's a i put i called it a demon but it could be a bull um, sure. and then the chicken and stuff like I mean, to me, they look like very close archetypes of those faces. Uh, and, and again, it's it's a matter of how they twist and how they overlap. You know, like they're literally pulling apart and coming closer together to create these different fields. And the ones that are the most perfect, the Buddha and the human, are the ones that are the most overlaid. They have the most symmetry between uh, the central points. And uh, so, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah this has been a this... heavy show already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, I the next gate, the next gate is seven. Okay, so this is six. Seven is an odd gate. So it's the outside of a filament. It's the 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 condom, for lack of a better term. Uh, is the odd numbers, and every one of those um, are are nesting subsequently all other creatures uh, through chirality and quaternion symmetry, uh, 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 literally in filament node relation through donuts. Nice. Like, yeah, through donuts, like literally. Right, 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 right. Through static potentiality. Through the yeah. static representation of potentiality. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's interesting. Frozen, the... by, frozen, but frozen by this. Yeah. See, this is where it gets kind of. I don't. I don't. I don't know. You know, it's like. And it burns, burns, burns. burns. <laughs> break a fire. Man, I was listening to that video he did not too like what two days ago. Just for, because I, I think you mentioned in one of the shows where you talked about you can listen to any music and immediately put yourself into a mental, emotional state based upon the music. That's Kundalini, like, yeah. immediately. Yeah. No woman yeah. necessary. Yeah. For, me, for me, it was, I was listening to Johnny Cash's Hurt uh, remake that he did of the Nine Inch Nails song. And what I do is I like to watch people, you know, the reaction videos on YouTube sometimes. And I, I don't know why, but it's just kind of a thing I do to now and then to pass time and to feel you know but yeah it's it's amazing to watch other people's especially the younger generation today react to the first time to hearing some of these songs and it's funny because i was just listening yesterday to johnny cash's hurt uh thing and he man it's, pow it's a powerful video and a powerful song and it oh, yeah. puts you in a very 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 uh, powerful emotional state that's for sure but yeah I'm on johnny cash rant there guys my bad <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Johnny Cash rants are okay. Right? <laughs> I started it. Yeah. I'm the instigator. Said rig of fire, man. Of fire. <laughs> Jinx. Uh. So uh, I found an I found Go an ahead. interesting one with uh with the number seven uh as in some of this last paper that I was working with, and uh, it's the ratio because uh, a lot of the numbers that I use in my things, I actually. They're, they're, they're whole numbers, but they're actually representative of ratios of like four to one. And, and one equals like the spin of one thing or the, or the diameter of one and four equals the diameter of the other. And that's their relationship. But you can boil it down to a single number and then plug it into differential equations. And, and spatial temporal. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because differential equations and the Lorenz equations that I use, they're all uh, iterated of, as functions of time. So there's no like linear... Right. There, so what it is is there's three different equation, um, three different variables. Two of them are nonlinear, and then one is linear. And the one that is linear is generally they use a ten for it. And so that's basically like um, the inverse relationship. That's our number scale. That's set theory. That's everything. And so that's how the other ones play into it. And uh, everything boils down to like functions of viscosity and density and heat and distance and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And sounds like it sounds like um, magneto hydrodynamics. It is. It is. It really is magneto hydro hydrodynamics boiled down to thermodynamics. Yeah. Um, and so, 
the one over 81 produces this um, 0.12. And if you iterate it out, it's 0.12345678. And it skips the seven. And so like with all my equivalencies between different numbers, whole numbers and infinite sets and stuff, the, the ah. six is the six is obviously equivalent to um, 0.618, which is phi. And then the seven yeah. is equivalent to 0.718, which is uh, two plus 0.718, which is E. That's the natural logarithm and the rate of decay. Yeah. And so that's where I'm trying to like, piece together the different types of numbers um, to see how they overlap and interact like kind of uh, non different in, in non-linear ways, you know, get into Demetria, yeah. man, get into Demetria because it's all there. You can pull up from almost any kind of recent news history or person that's in the news or anything and pull their Demetria and see these numbers being. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm seeing is the basis of saying Obama. You go through Barack Hussein Obama and it's 181. His name's 181. That's a great example right there. One over 81. Well, there's Barack Obama. His equals 181. Yep. So it's like. When that's not really his name, though, you know? He changed right, exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes. So. Yes, I know. Yep. Yep. I mean, well, I don't know. Living, I, we're you, all living in this ritualistic is great. world. I, I love it. And I think that what I'm explaining yeah, is the natural logarithm is the basis of it. Um, and, and the subsets, cause it's, it really is the code to be able to like pin down the timing of things and, and the patterns of the timing and the different sets of the timings and how they overlap. Um, but like, you know, my name, my full name means the King of the world in nice. simple, no, in simple English and in Jewish dramatria. So, I mean, I don't give that too much stock, but you know, yeah, mine came to <laughs> oddly enough, buddy, I might uh, freak out a little bit here for this one, but. Well, you know who the king of the world is, right? Uh, I don't know. The Pope? <laughs> no, according to, according to, uh, to Christianity. Oh, there's a guy's name. There's a guy's name, right? In the Gematria. It's Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer, yeah. Lucifer. Satan is, yeah. is the king of this world. Well, Satan well, and Lucifer aren't the same. Lu Lucifer is well, Jesus. I know. I know it's different. Yeah, I know it's different, so, but... You will be but Satan's not even Satan. Satan's not even the Satan, you know. So it's like right. hard to yeah, like hard really archetype. work that work in there. It's an archetype. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but my my name my name reduces down to the number seventy three, buddy. Oh, nice. In Gematria, and then had I been in part of my family because my father was adopted, had it been Freeman, and and plugged in that way, it would have been eighty six. Hmm. And 86 is, you know, Christ in the Bible. But if you know the relationship to 37 so and 73 seven. throughout the Taurus, or through the Torah. 7 is Christ in the Bible, too. Right, and I was born 777. Just and Christ died when he was 33, so arguably that could be uh, Christ. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's I, my problem I, with Gematria is you can... And especially yeah. because, like, you know, it's really based on Hebrew and, like, Sanskrit are the only, like, two mathematical alphabets that were really tied together the, the functions of sound and the letters. Mm -hmm. English That's is right. just, like, a bastardization. Like, you can't do Gematria with English, really. I mean, it's well, I like a third did level. A, did a complete breakdown of that. Actually, what he did is he said if you go and remove every fourth word, or sorry, four, fourth letter, from the English version of the Bible, remove the fourth letter, and then apply it appropriately, it becomes the mathematical code that is equivalent and it matches up. And he provided a whole great explanation of all that and provided evidence of it mathematically. Interesting. Yeah, but it's like uh, every fourth letter you can remove from the King James Version equals the, what you're talking about, you know? So it's almost like as if it's been encoded in multiple ways. So yeah. Whether it's the Torah, you can do the same thing with Moby Dick, right? But yeah, and uh, what is it? Shakespeare? Come on, let's you know, yeah. <laughs> not forget uh -oh. Shakespeare. It's I think honestly, we, what we're witnessing is either one or two things: either the there is a baseline code with in which existence exists, and therefore everything can, you know, you can find that code in everything, or when it comes to these classic, you know, literatures. There has been AI on this planet for much longer than we all can even fathom, and that AI is projecting and dictating and coordinating all of this. One of the two. 
No. It's, that's, 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 that's yeah, I think it's all emergent, but yeah, it's emergent for sure. It's discovery. It's it's definitely emergent. It's the holographic so. nature of it all. It's just it all echoes that's each what, other I think when that's you what see I meant it. By option A, yeah. It's more, that's, option A is either everything is emergent in the sense, of, and I probably didn't use the right terminology, but there is an overlapping structure to this, and as everything fits into it or comes into existence, it has to match those correlating numerical values, which is what we're seeing there, buddy, in your diagram. Yeah, it's echo. It's echoic. Uh, yeah. It's it, it is the, um, the <laughs> tubes and pipes and organs that are playing the sounds and notes and resonance of uh, of of the cascading Birkeland current breaking up and fracturing into smaller Birkeland currents, which are uh, cascading into smaller Birkeland currents, which are recursively braided through uh, through nurturing. Uh, through h hundreds of thousands of years, uh, beings and pulling them out of the earth with sound, like through pine cones, through life. Once you start, once we find the first creature that starts the the stacking in it's order, stacking, yeah. yeah, then you then then all of the rest of the creatures are born out of that through through the the through. Uh, Electrosono speciation, um, creature yeah. stack. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah you're right. And 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 the the chirality is evident in the in the conifers. Conifers are probably conifers and um, uh, not eucalyptus. Uh, what's that? What's that? Ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo biloba is one of the first beginning trees. And the shape of it is all over uh, with the vortexes and the and the and the the shape of the the, the leaf. Mm -hmm. Same with the shape of the uh, the pine cone and everything pine coning. A pine cone is literally a birthed, uh, like a, a wavelet in birth form, and manifestation and frozen in front of us. And it opens and closes and opens and closes, just like a wavelet. Uh, would do through different mediums, open and close through the through the dynamics and and the uh, the everything that I that we speak is is literally a forest of toruses. It's our our tongues moving around the the donut. That's what all language is. That's all we hear because all things are doing that. Um, the 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 center stillness moving through the shape of the donut. Um, yeah, I think what, you know, modern science today has made a huge, not fallacy, but a, almost, I think, an intentional ploy to project and, you know, kind of teach you know, standard model through wave functions. But in reality, those waves are really chiral, chiral spirals, chiralic spirals. Just well, I don't think anybody ever sense. really realized yeah, I don't think anybody ever really realized that the that that the wave is connected to the the wave is connected to the uh, particle. The particle is connected to the wave. Yeah, the wave right. -icle, you call it a wave -icle, you know, but it's really it's just chiralic. it's all these things that you see before you. All I'm right. showing is one chirality here, though. But there's an infinite number of chirality bands that band off of this. Well, not an infinite. A, 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 cl a, a, a closed number of uh, of chiralities that spin off of this and project in all directions. So this is your this is a but body. It's only, this but is it's the only beginning. closed because it was determined through what. So what closes it? Is it the fact of time? Is time what we're saying is closing this uh, potentialities? Once uh, you decided upon a path, let's say linear, you know, path well, or whatever. It's it's time. I have bodies as a function of time, yeah. In my model, that's. Uh -huh. I mean, to me, this I, I can view Buddy's picture right here as one being, or I can view it as one being circling another being, like a star going on the on the left one straight, and another star going around it, like a uh, you know, like Winningers and uh, um, uh, Garrett talked about in a couple of his videos, how the stars yeah. circle around each other like that, and. Um, 
And so there's a dim dim another dimensionality aspect to this of like, this is one or two. And, well, there's a quantum supersymmetry happening here. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, th this is what, this is why there's a supersymmetry or not a supersymmetry. Um, uh, uh, what is it? The, the potential po for the potential map for things to exist in multiple positions. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Right. Uh, once that's established, it's, it's closed? Uh, yeah, it opens and closes through, through loops of your reality tunnel. But you, yeah, can, yeah. you can get your mind so high that you can, get, you can get so close to the source, and that starts to turn you into a, 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 like an acidic monk, you know, almost like you, you, don't, want, you don't want any any aberrant anything around you you don't even like to eat food like all this stuff and you start getting all weird and you become a hermit up on the hill hey 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 hey, hey. don't talk about me that, like that, that, i've done that, that kind of <laughs> that kind of um that kind of energy of that uh that being an introvert versus yeah. being a, a a you know an ambivert which is both or uh the, the other one Extrovert, extrovert, extrovert. extrovert. Um, the power of the introvert is what makes the everything. That's where the greatest things come up. The authors of books, the, the, the you know, like the the the, the things the that the creators of everything is, is the power of the introvert. Now, uh, you have to you have to you have to be able to play in the world. Everything is play. So you don't want to be closed in that introvert. I don't know where I was getting with the introvert kind of thing, but yeah. No, not. that's, it's true though. You've got to like reel it back in. Cause I've been on that path for like two years and I was like, I've gone way too far out. I need to like come back to the system and yeah. like integrate back in. Yeah. So, yeah. So if I just keep going, I'm lost. It's I'm completely detached. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you're, you're speaking you know, my language right now because it's exactly what I've unfortunately had to experience for the past few years is completely hitting this realization point of all of these things we've been talking about not truly being able to express it nor have it visualized like this nor have it even closely related to anything I could express properly to anyone else yeah but yet knowing it you know knowing yeah. that there's something here that is beyond me in my capabilities of understanding or not just understanding but and it's not i said that wrong it's more my capabilities of properly expressing to people with without getting emotionally involved in it and then you know because you come up against such resistance these days to try to explain anything that's outside the normal paradigm you come up against such resistance within my own family within everyone around me friends it's yeah, I don't talk level, about this stuff with anyone. You can't. Yeah. High you level can't. Of resistance, you know, it yeah. sucks it's, so bad. Yeah, it's once it's once it's commonplace, and we're all dialing into the 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 the, the universe game, the universe game, which is which is what the Doherty set is is ultimately going to be. We're going to map it out. We're going to go in. We're going to understand it. These these are. If each one of these donuts here are a creature, we should be able to map out creatures and other star systems through the zodiacal light, take that zodiacal light, and find each one of these positions inside of the light and dial into that. And, and it, like a microscope, like a lens, a lens, a lens, a lens, a lens, lens, lens within lenses, and we'll be able to projectively map out and understand every single living creature and how it the timeline that it existed it with the medium yep. yes, yes, with yeah. all of the other creatures baby that's the light yeah. core sample that i'm talking about and we're gonna do it it's yeah just totally it's that easy where it's there's 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 people out there that are gonna hear this and it's just gonna happen that's just fact. no i mean like i I'm, i feel like i'm i'm working on decoding your thing without really knowing it and i'm like yeah. so excited to like like smash heads together a little bit further with you buddy and like because I feel like you have a such a great visualization that's so accessible to people, and uh, I, I'm like, yeah, I always try to like bring it down to like parable level and stuff, and that's why like I keep pushing this 
the, the birthing thing because I think it's so much more accessible to people if it's like living systems to understand yeah. the fractality of it. You know, if you talk yeah. about families as fractals and as babies and planets as derivatives, then it starts being like, oh, okay. Like, and then it happens at a certain time and it, it comes out as a whole unit, even though it started as like a bunch of waveforms inside of another unit. Yeah. And, uh, well, well, you find out, you start to find out actually, which is really like weird that this is the tree of life. This is the living, yeah, absolutely. this is the living waters. This is the hunger that people thirst for the, the, the information that people know is there, there. But, but we can't express it or can't even visualize it. Cause there's nothing that describes it except for the, the, uh, the map. we've had too much of the mapping of the opposite end of it or the mapping of incorrect, you know, fallacies through science and fallacies through different, uh, interpretation. Yeah. And I don't think that we did yeah, any wrong. It's I almost think like we've been, to... I don't even think that we've been trying to just well, trying to hide too much of it. It's just like, no one we've, really knows, but we we've been did trying know to see it. all the little parts, you know? Yeah, like, we did we know didn't it. Have, we didn't have fractals until 80 and we didn't have computers until now. And like, yeah, we can visualize so much more, so much faster now that it's time. Well, true. true. The Doherty set is the fractal that they're talking about in the new Jerusalem. Yeah. Boom. It yeah. is. There's a, there's a geometry that they're talking about and, and you see it as the living gates uh, to the heavens and you see it as living creatures surrounding the throne, bowing down, face forward uh, as the 24 elders, uh, the 12 and the 24 elders are around and throwing their, casting their crowns through the center of, uh, of the kingdom. Yeah. There's, there's crowns that we earn, bro. Yeah. We are, we are, we know that there's a resonance that we have to vibrate at and we're, we're, we're oming it. What is the ohm? The ohm is, I mean, come on, whatever, but, there is this is it this is it baby this is this is us understanding our cascade and this is the eternal living gospel this is this is uh the the the, the gospel that they're talking about in the end end times when the shit's hitting the fan and and there there's people there's specifically two people that go around and preach this to the world and 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 this is literally the, 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 the truth. You see it. It's the way, the truth, the life. Okay. I'm not saying it's, it's the end all be all. I'm not saying it's the big toe. I'm not saying it's the theory of everything or the, uh, the unification uh, thing or whatever. The, the, there's I think a, it the is. Gut. I think it's the unification. Yeah, grand it's unified good. theory, the gut. It's not right. the gut either. Grand unified theory. Maybe it is, but I think that there's more things here that's more relevant for us to discuss than even tapping into the science. I mean, right, right. We're, we're gonna, we can be, a, we can, we can go through a phase transition overnight with this type of information, um, uh, going out there and becoming technology as as a as a creature or, or a living civilization. The Kardashev scale that goes from I think it's called that from one, uh, uh what is it called? The, the type one civilizations. Yeah. So, yeah. Type one civilization to type two to type three in a, a expedient manner. Once we understand the, uh, the, the zodiacal light, the, the re rewinding yeah. and it's all chirality, literally yeah, all of the living creatures that. are going to be spinning one way and all of the non-living things are going to be spinning the other way. Boom. There's 50% of the information sorted out. Yeah. So go through that. You go this, through the stacking layers of how light, light filaments inside of light filaments inside of light and each one of those filaments are going to be the record of the living core uh uh um uh, morphogenetic field of that living creature uh the whole entirety of it all not just one of the creatures all of them yeah but exactly one at the same time depending on the yeah. observation of the observer yeah. And how they and how they counter rotate around their living food source, and how all the things counter rotate around their food sources. So that's yeah. the next layer up or down yeah. inside uh, of these uh, Birkeland currents that filament and nest. So not only does does do creatures behave like this, and this is the most uh, real 
uh, depiction that you can actually show of hierarchical creatures nesting within creatures. I've looked at the uh, the the phylum maps, and they they uh, the the best one that you could possibly do is is the, using this using this as a map to show how they nest inside of each other. Then you could actually be like, oh, this cactus is totally interdependent upon this bee, and this bee. This bee's life cycle is counter rotating, and then all of a sudden it's like bam, bow, boom, 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 creature yep. stacking. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, for me, like, I, I, besides the birth model, it's um, viewing everybody as, as an infinite being. Like, pe pe people don't understand infinity. And, like, the mathematicians and the Catholics, like, squashed the discussion of infinity back a long time ago because it threatened right. both of their sanities. And Leonardo once, Bruno. Yeah, I mean, once you realize that there's that infinity exists and that, that there has to be an infinity of infinities as well for infinity yeah. to exist and that every whole unit is itself an infinity mm -hmm. and that yeah. once you just tell people that like you're an infinite being, your consciousness is infinite, you can be divided infinitely. And I think that that's going to be a, a, a something that that can can help a lot of people click with it because once you realize that everything's infinite and that you're infinite, then you realize how that nesting happens. Yeah, um, and it becomes a space filling. It literally becomes an omnidirectional space filling yes. um, uh, uh, medium. All yeah. of a sudden, you see how like how it's all interdependent. Yeah, how it all interconnects. Like it yeah. just is completely interdependent always, because that's what science has been doing. They've been breaking down all the parts. But they haven't been wanting to put it together because their focus has been on specific, like regularizing certain functions, regularizing phenomenon to understand yeah. it. And we couldn't put it all together. You can't see the whole unless you can see all the parts. Well, there's so, going to be a lot of there is a lot of Renaissance men and women that are being born and birthed because of the amount of information that's out there. People yeah. are just people are just going to look at that, this yeah. and look at that, and they're just going to be like, "Oh, well, that goes together." Yeah. And yeah, you know, like, it's going to be so obvious to everybody soon. And um, like, I don't believe in like that. Like, we're hiding it. We just don't know it. There's so much to not know. Right. There's so much, you know, it's like, don't be all negative about like these motherfuckers have all this stuff and this geometry and they're throwing right. it in our face. And it's like, no, dude, it's they're in our face. You. It's all there. Yeah, it's all beautiful. And it's all in our face with the with the with the uh, the holy monuments all over the world. And, you know, it's just like rise above this negativity to anybody who who's all about the whole negative side and and focus on the beautiful side of it how to integrate mm -hmm. with it how to me, communicate only, with it. I'm, I'm not trying to throw a negative wrench in this but the only thing that i'll say is that there's complete and total evidence that civilization has hit and reached this point before and that is what i have you know i guess frustrations against is the fact that these civilization, our civilization here on this planet has reached these levels of knowledge in the past. And that, that is what has been passed along through these different societies and groups that has been then therefore, you know, utilized against us in order to keep us from make like such a great example is the number of mathematicians out there that have come to the same conclusions, but just labeled them differently. And, 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 know put functions together in different forms and then different uh, sections not being able to agree upon this meaning that or that meaning that for the nomenclature all of this is a intentional designed effort by in my mind it's by groups that already know this information have complete and total uh knowledge of what you and i and everybody what we've just discussed have knowledge of this from and not one person living maybe necessarily on the planet today but in the past have passed down not necessarily the information but the fact that the information had been achieved as a society and as a group and as a you know planet we have reached these levels of knowledge in the past that's yeah true. i mean well you know there's there's certainly a that real possibility that the people who you know took the tour and wrote that had information from the disaster cycle and encoded that in the into genesis the numbers there are right. very indicative of that and if you know that, then you know that it eventually gets hit. We get hit again. And so what you want to do is make every effort to make the population large enough that we can become interplanetary.
and that required a lot of specialization and a lot of knowledge to be recovered to to get us to that point yeah and, right and we need a lot more people having we need a lot more people having babies out there yeah. so get down brown 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 <laughs> yeah so the final Make love. The whole call is everybody go have not sex. war <laughs> like outcast said Make love, not war. <laughs> yeah, for Sorry. sure, for Sorry. sure. That's what keeps the system expanding, you know. In 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 my iteration, that natural logarithm, you know, it's the rate of a constant rate of constant expansion constant. and the yeah. rate of natural decay, and so that's how you get both happening at once and looking like and, each other. And again, and, that's uh, that's what I meant a second ago by you know yeah. individuals going to work. I mean they've poison food they poison the ethos they poison the water in, in multiple aspects and and I'm, i cannot say that it's unintentional at this point you've got to admit that there's a lot of intention behind what these different programs and different understandings of thought have come to when it comes to basically where we are as a complete and total society and a race of people on the planet as far as humans are concerned there there is just what seems to be a coordinated effort to maintain the human body in a constant state of healing to where it's having to repair itself instead of being able to fully and completely develop. Now, it may be that that was intentional to where we could get to where the knowledge has been parceled enough to be accumulated to how we've just done in this call, for crying out loud. You have to accumulate all this knowledge, and it could not have been done up until now without the great works of previous individuals doing their own individual work so you know maybe it is just more of a matter of there's always some people rising in evolution and some people falling you know like not everybody has the capacity to put in the time or the vision to see the things that we're trying to talk about and explain here and uh, a lot of that's a function of time and just life, you know, like it's not their fault. I do think that it, it does go back to, you know, consciousness as a whole. And then the, you know, I keep saying the hundred monkey rule, hundred monkey rule. You know? But it's it's very much that I think once enough individuals, like Buddy said earlier, are able to just look at these things and understand them fully and say, yep, that's how it is. And it intuitively, back to the previous call, but intuitively they understand it. They yeah. don't have to go through and parse it through. And I think yeah. uh, Jordan Peterson and this uh, Pimrose uh, guy, they sat and had a conversation about it. And that's what Pimrose sat down and did a great uh, job, I think, of explaining the difference between accepting individuals' work as one thing, but then truly under having an understanding of it. Yeah. As, as more and more individuals are born into this realm that have a higher level of understanding or at least a uh, the consciousness flow is you know resonating with them at a higher frequency or how whatever the, the the wording we need to use here to properly get my point across pick it and use it but you know the reality is it goes back down to once we all the, a higher number of people get this and understand this fully then everyone starts to just automatically not through osmosis but through the resignation you know the, re the resonating field it just becomes intuitively true. Yeah, sympathetic knowledge. I know that right. we can't advance. We can't. You can't advance to certain next stages without literally using and going through the Doherty set. Like it, it's a we we could go many directions, but all of the directions are going to lead eventually to this. It just is what this, it is. This, yeah, it's just. It's the way that things orbit. It's the periodicity. It's the it, it is it's yeah, the way everybody can sit and try to prove it wrong. They can try to pull up different numbers. They can put an al, al you know algebraic expression together that says no 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 see here and immediately even utilizing the Doherty set you could go back and say yeah but here's where you're wrong because that's a whole number and that whole number really is this and that's how you get back to it so you 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 see so even just utilizing the Doherty set as the baseline static structure of the potentiality you can prove or disprove almost everything either mathematically geometrically or algebraically however you can you just can and that's just what it is yeah you know I, I also think that there's uh different paths for people you know some people are on the path of knowledge some people are action some people are service and you know as we go along there's always going to be people who are trying to figure it out uh 
consistently and logically and be able to explain it. But some people are just going to be like, oh, yeah, everybody's infinite or whatever it is, you know, that is really right. simple to accept as like a matter of faith. Well, it's and like it's like every your example of what you're saying here. Sorry to interrupt is is yeah, uh, it is once people started seeing everything as a fractal reality, everyone was like, yeah, it's a fractal reality. You know, it's mm -hmm. like once you start yeah. seeing the Doherty set interacts and with everything, that's just the way that matter yeah. is, is organized yeah. and that light is organized, then we're going to see spectrums in a totally different uh, uh, organizational understanding along with um, molecules, how they're built, how they associate directly with light and, and the creation and construction of both back and forth and the transfer of them, you know, yeah. and creatures and, you know, everything. It's just like, it's, there's just so much that, uh, that I'm, I'm looking forward to. There's just so much beautiful things that are that are just uh, on the edge of the horizon and uh you know i know that it does feel uh, like it's right it, there man it does it feel is. like it's just right there it, it's literally right there someone's gonna hear these phone calls and uh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what keeps me going man like i don't talk yeah. to many people who get it but i know that like it, everybody's gonna get it soon and it's gonna become right. so obvious right it's like it's a it's a it's like uh i'm looking at this fractal branded table right now here and i put the lead on one side and the lead on the other and the truth is the 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 currents are working through the path of least resistance through the wood for one purpose to complete the loop. I was going to say to find each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, to complete yeah. The, the loop, the circuit. Or a bullet. Yeah. yeah. That's just how knowledge and the truth works. That's how it do. Yeah. And you could see it in every single aspect of everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and relate it back to it. It's just crazy, but it's true. Almost everything, whether it's a table or anything, almost every action or even just it, whether it's an inanimate object or a, biological creature all of it carries and you can see at some point or some level up or down this whole entire i don't say pattern but the ultimate matrix the ultimate uh well network the doherty set network itself in motion where's where's the where's the bible i'm looking for a bible we need to literally read what's going to happen when the new jerusalem and the uh, 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 is realized because what happens is we all realize there's there's no more tears there's no more tears for a reason because we all see we all we, we we all can see and sympathize with the whole holographic matrix of the universe yeah that's why there's no tears because tears. the new jerusalem is a truth it's a technology it's literally the bride of christ Christ is something. It represents something in our world to a lot of people. Now, the bride of that is something. Think of the power of that. That's taking the universe and marrying it to Christ, showing how Christ and all of us were here before this matrix and this holographic uh, living, pulsating, two-way uh, dynamic system is. Uh, we, we needed these, these ideas to wrap our minds around these ideas that we had that are fractal with no words to describe them before. Well, like, the visual, I think the visualization that you've provided also is a huge, huge uh, you know, springboard more than anything absolutely. else. Absolutely. What you're saying. Yeah, you, wait till you see the, the, the how beautifully nested the filaments are inside of each other. And each one is <laughs> describing a different animal through a different frequency that's recurrent and counter rotating around the frequency of the animal below it that it's feeding on and it's a symphony and there is nothing but life that's all that's happening is life there's there is no death it's all living it's all there's nothing the universe is nothing but giving there is no taking and right. and the things that come into existence uh through negentropy, the uh, the there's a there's the an opposite side. the opposite name of well through speciation thinking about it negentropically uh, speciation is the opposite of of 
of extinction. So we already know, and we're always focused on the death. Of course, there's names for the death part, but do we ever do uh, na nature shows on speciation constantly all the time? Finding new creatures, creatures becoming new creatures within two, three years. Um, the dynamism uh, and the plasticity of these donuts and the arrangements of these, these donuts to, to possibly turn into other donuts and overlap and intertwine and become these other donuts and these dimensions. Yeah. You know, like the predictions here are endless. endless the yeah. the Doherty set and the predictive and analytics in the Doherty set are, are going to be a baseline for us to be able to predict the hierarchical acting behavior of every living thing on the, on the planet. Well, and, and even all the way down, I think to the micro level. Yeah. And know, other, you know, and other star systems. Even I don't even think. Yeah, I don't even think we're going to be able to find it here on Earth because I think that the easiest way for us to find it is to just take the light that's streaming down, take a take a rent some time on a telescope, get that uh, some sort of a light sample that we know is the whole entirety that's coming from a galaxy or at least a theorized um, planet that has possibly li or possibly life. What are those light, uh, planets and the Drake theory and the, you know, the equation of which planet, planet might have life right, right, right. And, and or intelligent life. And we aim it at that and we, we, we collect it. the light. We collect the light for a long time until we start to be able to understand how to read the light and to break it down using either a series of stacks, a series of lenses that are rotating inside of a cylinder. Um, that are because you can put you can place i've been wanting to talk to um my mom used to work for the optical place um and i've been wanting to talk to doctors about these lenses and if you stack them in a certain order and you shine la lasers through them i think something happens and that's just like the doherty set if you were to take certain le lenses and put them inside of cylinders and rotate the cylinders you could probably reanimate the light that's coming from that star system. There's gonna be something that's like that. And it's gonna be very simple. Um, and, and then there's gonna be a holographic, either a holographic projection or some sort of a room where that light is re-emitted and animated and you're gonna see it. Maybe in like a, think about it, like a smoky church where people are putting incense and resonating and singing to God and singing to the glory of the infinite. Yeah, I mean, that was the first, uh, one of the first descriptions of, of time travel was actually like a hollow projection, like what you're describing. Well, let me just throw this kind of kink in your system, buddy, for that. And let me say this. What if, and hypothetically, we were to take the pharmaceutical industry that's been prevalent across the planet for so long, pushing what we've all deemed as negative things, but in reality, as paved a way for a map to do exactly what you're saying. What I mean by that, let me just read this quick little two-second paragraph, man, that I wrote yesterday. But ECM is a multifunctional binding and scaffolding protein that interacts with a variety of extracellular and structural proteins that contribute to the maintenance and integrity of several tissues and organs. Fibronectin is secreted as a soluble, covalently bound dimmer of approximately 440 KD molecular weight. So it acts as a come out almost like a, so the frequency of 440 KD is provided as a great example of the Frank Condon interfacing frequency. This being done so in reference to the originating node within the observed Doherty set network for the purposes of this example, the ECM protein. Fibronectin is encoded by a single gene. However, different forms of fibronectin arise through alternative splicing. Circulating fibronectin is produced primarily in the liver, and this soluble form of fibronectin is referred to as plasma fibronectin. It can be surmised, therefore, that the resonating frequency and therefore potentiality of the fibronectin being produced varies and changes as instructed by the originating frequency modulator or potentiality. In this example, the hair follicle acts as the chamber or the melting pot for the majority of these biological actions. That is a what I'm saying is, is why, you know, because the snakes being always the symbols used by the pharmaceutical industry on a staff, you know, what if in a DNA structure, the helical structure, all these things, what if the pharmaceutical industry has just done it for us already? 
They just don't know they did. Oh, yeah, that's how things occur. I mean, that's recurrence. Like, literally, like, I think that's, like, the irony of God, honestly. God's sense of humor. <laughs> right, right, right. The way that, like, like God yeah. always uses the most faulty, fucked up people as his ambassadors. Like, just yes. literally, the last person that you would ever think. That it's usually probably the fool. And everybody's like, that guy is not telling us what's going on. And then ultimately it starts happening. And then you're like, no way, dude. How did you do that? And it's like, because you got to get to that Terrence McKenna type of thinking outside of the box. uh, Where not only using, you don't need to use drugs, but that heavily helps you understand through psychotropics, the uh, different layers of what's really going on. Um, uh, uh, for sure, and, and then, for sure. Just in, at least in a, if you're if you're thirsty for the visualization of it, and and want to truly yeah. experience, you know, have that experience to visualize full body, full, full body. Yeah, That's full why body. people full. say that it's more real when they go to these places. They say it's more real than the existence that that we are in. You know, and there's something to be said about that because they start seeing all these patterns that break down that are fractal. That, and you look at every, all of my videos, one after person, after person, after person, after person. They're like, that's exactly what I saw. You have no idea how much that affected right. my life. I can't believe this. You know, it's just like one after another, after and another, it can't after another. Like, for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's and what Jordan we Jordan Peterson see. talks it's, about it in a lot of his talks. He talks about how. It's called form constant. Form constant. Like when you push on your eyes, when you push on your eyes right. and you see all those patterns right. that come into existence. Like in your eyes. Yeah. Are you doing sun gazing much, buddy, at all? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, how else do you see this place? Right, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we'll get Not it. enough. <laughs> Not yeah, enough me, uh, sun gazing. Not enough. I mean, right. I, how about how about some tai chi or some qigong and, and whilst uh, and, and some breath work while looking at the sun tonight? We Hoff. can do that. Yeah. Well, Wim Hof or not, uh, there's there's breath work, and then you start seeing all these particles that you've never seen before, and they're like they're like little orbs that are everywhere. And you put your hands up and you look directly into the sun and you start seeing the counter rotation that, that helped uh, us become a civilization through alternating current, AC, the key, alternating current. And now the key, the next key is counter rotation. Like Don Scott drills home. Counter rotation between layers that build up the double layers of plasma. Yeah. And that's how we're going to see the different layers of uh of light in the light core samples and i can't wait to be able to go everywhere in the universe being a space bearing right. civilization <laughs> while staying at home how shove this kardashev scale guess yeah. what we can do it we can do it from home baby and yeah. this is what i'm talking about it's not like a it's not like a oh man in order for us to get up and out of here, we're going to have to go. All these scientific movies are people inside of spaceships. <laughs> no, bro, that's not, no, it's not it. It's not how it's going to be. Yeah. Not it. It's, it's going to be us in our home. It's going to be some sort of uh, multiplicative off of the uh, hollow verse, the multiverse, not the multiverse, the, uh, the uh, 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 metaverse. What's happening here is it is meta. Meta is information, information stacking. Right. So metadata is on all of these scales of every single one of these uh, tendrils and filaments is filled with metadata. That's why I know that you're, we're going to be able to look at every creature's lifeline. Yep. Uh, and I think become hy- all hydrogen. Yeah, I think hydrogen for some reason, I don't know why, but I feel like hydrogen is going to play a large part in all that. And I don't know if it's whether, you know, just hydrogen's like, probably oh, hydrogen's probably one. Hydrogen yeah. might be the first gate. Step, and step, the first gate yeah, is like step one. Is, is the right hand of God the Father, which is the first iteration off of the pattern. Yeah. The pattern yeah. iterates itself. The first From iteration that. off the pattern is Christ, which we all have the capability to be. So 
in that first iterative pattern uh, that's subsequently uh, all of the information uh, that we that all of everything has to go through the first gate so it's like it's like pick, it's like the needle that picks the zona pellucida uh, like the sperm that pops the egg right. like uh it, it has to be incubated and that's through the first gate and then there's just an infinite amount of gates and infinite amount of information and the best way to probably break it down would be to map out all of the prime numbers uh, and the the parity of prime numbers and the the subprime numbers, et cetera. Map, map and that's already been mapped out and mapped out map out der direct derivatives of that in relation to the correlation of the Doherty set um, and down uh, uh, some frequencies over the top of that. Yeah, yeah. Could, uh, I mean, I'm just hypothetically, I'm saying that the you what you need is a comparative something to compare it to. Right, I I understand what to, you're saying. You know, what, so what, what, what is that called have, scientifically? You need a uh, you need a variance. Yeah, a, a, a var not a variable, a var you need a you Constant, need a, a frame of reference. Yeah. A frame of reference. You need something to compare it to. Yeah, that would yeah. be probably a working model, maybe, of yeah. uh, yeah. real life. Real the problem is, is like everything is moving and differential. So, like, in order to observe anything, you have to focus you on one it. thing. You, you have to pick it. whatever it is, like, um, as that you, you want to use. Everything else to... keeps moving around you, and you're like, damn it, I lost all the equations, I lost all the yeah. math, or whatever, because yeah. everything kept moving while I was focused on this one thing. Mm -hmm. What a tangled web! Wow. Word. Yeah. Word. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has probably been the greatest conversation of my life. I ain't gonna lie. That's yeah, good. this is awesome. a pinnacle for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm glad that I didn't get the headache in the back of the left side of my um, neck. I used to get that when I got into a uh, deep conversation a like long it. time ago when I was younger. Oh, shit. Yeah. No, that would yeah. annoy the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, dude, but I, I couldn't not have the best, great, deep, philosophical, long conversation, so I just went with the headache. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably <laughs> like, would have too, the, man. <laughs> I'll take the migraine. Yep. Right, right. Cool, Good man. Stuff. Well, hey, I got to jump off and take care yeah, of some stuff. Same here, guys. My dogs are barking at me to go throw the ball so all right, all right guys great nice. talk uh good talk. thanks thank for your time stuff. No. thank you buddy thank you jason I appreciate yeah thanks it. guys thank you all take right care. see y'all soon take it the geometric view is a love is watching product uh, love is watching being thank you for doing that your eyeballs out. Pay attention. There's a lot going down this year. Be vigilant. Be mindful. Be insightful. Be loving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being kind. Share the love. Spread the love. Become the love. Amen.
prettiest of life I'm there, I'm there with the grandest and the prettiest of life I'm there. With the grandest and the prettiest of life I'm there. Oh, oh no. with the grandest and the prettiest of life I'm there. I'm gonna hold you forever, 
Episodes is produced and created by Skullet. That's S K U L L E T.